Hello and welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today is part two of our discussion with Brother Ken Gibson on Washington Masonic Charities. concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions either here on YouTube or on our Facebook page. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up and especially any comments on our videos. Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast. I'm Matthew Apple, a Mason here in Washington, and I, we have with us a uh, very worshipful brother, David Colbeth, who's also uh, in the Grand Lodge of Washington, and Steve Chung, who's up in British Columbia, and, or excuse me, worshipful brother, Steve Chung, who's up in British Columbia. And today we are, uh, as part two of our interview with brother Ken Gibson, who's the Executive Director of Washington Masonic Charities. Welcome back, Ken. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It almost feels like we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> It, it doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, David was saying earlier that he had he had a question or two for you. So, David, did you? What do you got there? The, the magic of television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were we were kind of wrapped up last show talking about youth, but there was one program at least that I noticed on the website that I didn't know about actually. Being a past board member, I try to stay somewhat connected, but uh, you guys are moving fast and doing some great things. And I noticed Deca was a new partner on there. Can you talk about that relationship? Yeah, we've we've worked with uh, DECA for the last, uh, I want to say, three, actually three or four years uh, in various capacities. We've provided a little bit of assistance uh, uh, for uh, their leadership, uh, being able to travel a little bit. Uh, we've uh, really, uh, one of the programs that we've been doing is our Think Civility program, which is working with young people around the ideas and concepts of civility. And, and given uh, the work that DECA does in terms of leadership and marketing, communications, uh, and the fact that they're in uh, at least 190 high schools in, in Washington State, uh, that ability to work with those emerging leaders and emerging communicators and impart some of those ideas of civility is, is a piece that we've been working with them uh, on uh, in particular over the last couple of years. And so uh, we've done uh, Civil Dialogue, which is a program that some people may have seen uh, at the Conference of Grand Masters or in their jurisdictions. It comes out of the University of Arizona. Uh, we've uh, done that and, and actually was just very impressed. Uh, we had after lunch, uh, the last time that we did this uh, with them at their uh, annual uh, meeting that they, they do over in, in this particular case, it was in downtown Seattle. Um, so you've got like more than a thousand uh, high school students in, in downtown uh, focusing on leadership and communication and, and marketing and business. Um, after lunch, uh, we had uh, close to a hundred kids show up for a discussion about civility. Uh, they could have chosen to go to any session, uh, and civility was one that they came to, which I, I kind of floored me because I'm, I, you know, it's an important topic. But uh, for, if I'm if I'm thinking back to when I was in high school, civility would probably not be the one that I would run to. <laughs> so it's it's been interesting work with them. So that's cool. So if, if a lodge was interested in partnering somehow with their local high school or high schools, uh, their district at least, in a working with DECA or working with Civility, is that something that they would contact Washington Charities and then they would contact the school district or could we go to the school district and say, hey, we, we hear you're connected with Washington Charities and they would go, oh yeah. Or, or is it yeah. kind of one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, we always encourage people to, to sort of work through us and then we can, if, if we'll either have that connection or we can build that connection. And we can make it easy. We know, you know, we know in the lodges, a, a lot of guys um, are working, doing other jobs, and 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 I've got a person who works on this stuff uh, full time uh, to to keep things connected up with this. And so that's it's he can bird dog that uh, and uh, run it down the pass and build those connections up, and then uh, be able to find the right fit for the lodge. And that's that that's always been a big part of what we try to do is to not try to have a cookie cutter approach. We recognize that different lodges are different, different school districts are different, and they're going to have needs that are unique to their communities. And so what we try to do is to 
you know, have a broad enough program where we can then tailor within it uh, to be able to, to do that. And that's worked out pretty well so far. And of course, you're talking about Kurt Miller. So if we, if a, if a lodge or youth organization, DMLA or Rainbow or Bethel, uh, Joby's Daughters wanted to maybe connect with their school and do something with their school, it's almost as good or better to maybe go to Kurt and Washington Islamic Charities and say, hey, could you talk to them on our behalf? Because they might be more receptive to talking to them rather than even you know, this Masonic secret organization where a, a, a nonprofit's going to them and helping saying, Hey, we're already working with duck. We're already working with this school, this school, this, we're already doing these things. You know, here, here's some additional support locally. Yeah. And, and it usually works pretty well. It's one of the nice things of, of having the word charities in your name is on that front. Uh, um, oftentimes <laughs> organizations think that we're bringing money to them, you know, when we call them. So <laughs> they usually answer the phone. So it, it is helpful, but you're right. You're right. It, uh, we can smooth the way for that. That's awesome. So how, speaking of that, how, how can, I, I know the chair, especially the library and museum is always looking for volunteers. And that's maybe a whole nother topic or whole segment we can discuss, but uh, what can, what can a Mason or someone connected with Masonry or just the average person, citizen looking, happen to listen to this or talk to see this, how can they volunteer or help other than maybe money? Uh, what can they do to help wash Masonic charities? Yeah. Uh, volunteering wise, uh, there's, there's really a lot of opportunities uh, right now in particular. And, and one of the things we have, so with our outreach services program, for example, we have uh, uh, really three case managers and one program director uh, covering 71,000 square miles uh, and uh, serving 10,000 uh, Masons, their wives, uh, members of Masonic orders and so forth. Um, there's just no way uh, for our, our uh, case manager care coordinators to really be effective in maintaining the um, the communication relationship. So we have uh, probably on the magnitude of about 750 clients a year in that particular program. And so uh, volunteers who are willing to make phone calls just to check in, how are you doing? Um, do you need anything? Um, we have a lot of older people who um, in, in particular right now, um, you know, they're, they're really missing their social connections. Um, and even before this was going on, a lot of older people who maybe aren't able to show up to lodge or their Masonic thing or whatever, you know, their particular social thing is um, because of whatever physical situation they're in. Um, it's, it's really hard on older people to, to not have that social aspect of things. And so being able to uh, pick up the phone uh, to have volunteers do that. We have a volunteer over in University Place. Uh, it's a member of Horace Tyler Lodge. Uh, Steve Hunter just does a fantastic job. And he's not a computer guy, but he's definitely a telephone guy. Give him a list of phone calls. He checks in on a weekly basis. How are you doing? Let's us know if anybody needs anything. We, it helps us be more efficient. So that's that's one way that is uh, uh, really, really important. Um, another way of volunteering uh, is, uh, and this kind of uh, trips into the Masonic Outreach Services, we have a program called Operation Masonic Relief, and that's a program that is uh, designed to work with lodges to help them improve how they're working with their older brothers and their widows. Uh, um, sadly, um, we're, and I don't know how it is in BCU Con, if you guys are using uh, Grandview, we're using that database right now. And we, uh, at the jurisdictional level, we have less than 300 widows in our database. And well, you know, we're losing 600 Masons a year uh, who are passing. And so we, we know that we don't know who all of the widows are. And a lot of lodges with transitions over the year haven't kept up with that. So uh, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to build up lodges to be more effective and have a better foundation and kind of relearn in some respects, how to do this thing. And so at a lodge level, um, the better job that lodges do of focusing on things like the phone calls and the checking in, then when somebody does get into trouble and it's bigger than what a lodge can do, the way I kind of liken it is, is that uh, the lodges are on the front line, the guys that are out there are on the front line, but sometimes you need to call in the artillery. Uh, that's when uh, you can bring in Washington Masonic Charities for those needs that are a little bit bigger. Uh, our our goal in that program is to help help our older adults uh, basically be able to stay in their homes for as long as possible, be comfortable, and have meaning and dignity in their lives. Um, so that that phone call, that communicating, or things like this, I, I 
I'm kind of hoping that that Zoom and things like this become more regular uh, as we move forward. That people have gotten more used to it and realize that this this is actually, um, you know, just sitting here, you get so much more from you know seeing people and listening to them and um, kind of getting that feedback. Well, so we do this every two weeks, you know. <laughs> you can come yeah. back, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome back well, anytime. Uh, have you had yeah. an uptick in, in requests since the with the COVID situation? Um, I'm I'm waiting for that to occur. I don't think that that wave has come up yet. I think that that we needed to get through. Uh, in particular, what I'm anticipating are requests for Masonic relief. So not necessarily widows and older brothers, but but uh, Masons who maybe have gotten into financial trouble uh, that weren't anticipating things. Uh, based on when the kind of the the uh, stay at home order came down in March, my guess is that people are going to be kind of okay into April. But but I think what's going to start happening is that as we get towards the end of April and those rent checks are coming due and people don't have all the information on what to do, um, you know, are there rent moratoriums? What does it mean? Who do you call? I think we're going to be dealing with a lot more of that. Um, so what we've been focusing on, so like like so many, we're we're operating remotely, and it's uh, uh, it's kind of funny because Grand Lodge is like, how come you guys don't answer your phone? How come you use UMA and all that? And it's like, well, because I operate a statewide organization, and and uh, you know we have three different offices, and and the way I set Masonic Charities up, and I, this is one of those things where you know I'm happy with the decision now. Is I ha I don't have a server. We use Office 365. Uh, I set this up from the get-go that any one of our employees can do their work from anywhere the, in the state, basically, that they can get Wi-Fi or a telephone connection. So pretty much when when we made the decision to shut the offices, um, all right, guys, I'll just, you know, bring your chargers home. Just keep keep and, doing what uh, you're doing. <laughs> just do what you do. And so that's what we've been doing. Uh, we haven't seen that uptick yet, but what we have been doing is, is uh, leaning in, being very proactive, and reaching out to all of our clients to make sure that they have what they need to check in. Um, and the feedback that we're getting is really amazing from that. I mean, we're, we're, we're getting such uh, appreciation from the people who were calling, who were saying, you know, I'm doing fine, but I, you know, I, I, I'm going nuts. I can't talk to people or go anywhere. I really appreciate getting this phone call. So that, that I think has actually been really helpful. A couple of other things that we've been doing is we've been doing a twice weekly and I'm going to forget the times on this. Uh, it's it's being sent out in a in a physical letter that the Grand Master approved here this next week, so you'll all get it in the mail. Monday nights so, at seven, Monday nights at seven, and Thursdays at eleven, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I'm confusing it with because we have a Wednesday one that's Operation Masonic Relief for the Lodges. Yeah. Because I know that uh, Very Worshipful David has been participating in those. But what we're trying to do is to generate more participation and having uh, a couple of weekly Zoom meetings, just again where uh, people can can sort of check in and, and, and gather and, and be together. And it doesn't even have to be over, I need help. I mean, geez, you know, bring a joke to the table. Um, tell us a story, um, you know, whatnot. I mean, this is the stuff that is really, really important uh, is keeping people connected. And, and through that, we learn things. We've, we've had, um, in the last couple of weeks, through that reaching out, um, we, we learned actually one unfortunate thing is that there, a Masonic widow, um, uh, had is was down to eating popcorn and what didn't know what she was going to do to feed her pets and you know just as a result of that phone call you know of course you know we got her set up with groceries and uh, took care of all of that and and we'll be doing that on a regular basis until we get things smoothed over um, and then you know then there's the sadly kind of the 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 stuff that you know where life goes on even in the middle of this thing uh we there's a family uh that has been a masonic family that's been going through uh their daughter had uh cancer and uh, has been going through treatment and uh, came to a point where it, it just wasn't working and so uh our uh, one of our care coordinators uh you know, basically walked alongside with that family uh, right up to and then beyond the passing of the daughter this last weekend. And she was, I think, 19 years old. I mean, very young. Um, and, you know, and that's the kind of stuff that our, our staff, you know, we're, we, we don't, we, we, you don't hear about it a lot, but that's the kind of stuff that our staff deal with and have been dealing with for years are these kind of real human things. And, and again, it was one of those things where the family, um, the, the mom and talking with with the, the care coordinator just 
was really expressing that appreciation and just said she didn't know what she would do um, if she didn't have our person there to, to kind of lean on and do that. And we've been providing them some, because of the treatments in Seattle and where they live, we've been providing them a little bit of assistance with rent and uh, making sure that they had what they needed because they were trying to maintain two homes and it was impacting their ability to work. Again, we tailor this kind of stuff, but I'm anticipating that we're going to run into more of that. The challenge that we have right now, and, and uh, Steve, this is where that idea of, of an assessment could be beneficial. Uh, 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 Masons are prone to thinking that uh, the Washington Masonic Charities has the national treasure, and uh, and we don't. <laughs> you know, there's there's that's no. What, that's uh, why I joined. I thought, come on. Yeah, there's there's no secret pot of money out there, and and uh, the homeless youth situation, for example. Um, we need people to make donations. We actually really do need that. I posted a video on the Washington Masonic Charities Facebook page uh, uh, talking about that, and we had. We had a few uh, contributions come in, um, but it's it's real. This is all very very real stuff, and I think we can kind of get wrapped up in our lodges uh, with our opinions and kind of the way we do things and the peculiarities of, of masonry around that stuff. But um, and now uh, the the people that when they donate, they can get a uh, charitable donation tax receipt and and yes. uh, whatnot. That's excellent. Uh, Absolutely. Well, and you you talked about you know, the, the the being able. To, it doesn't take the contribution. You talked about the gentleman that gave eighty seven thousand dollars. It doesn't take everybody to give eighty seven thousand dollars. If you have that, great. If you're able to set that up, great. But there's a neat a neat program, a uh, dollar a day, three sixty Mason three sixty five. Can you talk about that a little bit? It's a neat simple process to yeah give, to give back. And you you talked about it how yeah it, it yeah go ahead. It's 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 not rocket science, uh, and and it's kind of funny because uh, I spent a lot of time with the uh, Alaska uh, Grand Lodge a couple years ago in North Dakota, uh, the Grand Lodge officers and uh, uh, most forceful John May, uh, and we were just bouncing some ideas off of each other, and then uh, you know we, we went and you know did did the stuff that, that we do. We came back, and I you know said, "Do you mind if I join you?" and sat down to have dinner with them, and and. Uh, um, most worshipful May was, he was like, we, you know, we got this great idea, a dollar a day for charity. And I was like, that's it. You know, can I steal that idea? And he's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we uh, um, basically came back and uh, basically started this, this concept of charity 365. And it's a challenge to people. It's, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a dollar a day, but um, uh, right worshipful Cameron Bailey is he's been out at district meetings. One of the things that, that, uh, in his talk that he's he's reminded people about, this is our senior uh, Grand Warden, uh, is uh, or he's, he's kind of challenged people to think about this. Imagine if you gave to your virtues every day the amount that you give to your vices, uh, you know, your coffee or in his case, uh, you know, chewing tobacco or, you know, whatnot. And uh, that's kind of the concept that, that we have. And, and really, you can go online, you can make a monthly contribution of, uh, you don't even necessarily see it. And that's the challenge. It's just a dollar a day to charity. And uh, um, it's not hard to, to get up to that amount. Well, that's and the, that's it, your can, it can make a huge difference. That's your funding problem right there. The Masons are so virtuous in this, in, inherently that there's not enough, uh, enough vice money to, to <laughs> contribute. There's, yes, there's, there's just no, no vices left. And uh, that is uh, MasonicCharity365.org. Uh, that's uh, another one if people want to get involved with that. That's an easy one to get to. Very cool. Very cool. Well, uh, sorry, this, I, I lost. Go ahead, guys. I lost uh, my, my question there. <laughs> so his, tra um, his train of thought derailed. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we talked about the youth programs, and we talked about the um, the outreach and the so the some of the programs you have for for people getting up in age. Uh, then, so I know. Uh, library and museum also falls under your umbrella. Would you mind talking about that briefly? Sure. The Masonic Library and Museum uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, we talked about in the uh, first episode, uh, uh, we're in the same building as the uh, Grand Lodge of Washington, and, and the library takes up about half of, uh, well, it takes up the entire downstairs area. It's open to the public. It's open to Masons. Currently, uh, Monday through Wednesday, well, until things change, uh, until the, the stay-at-home order comes off. But uh, ordinarily, it'd be open Monday through Wednesday 
from uh, nine to noon. Uh, however, that's contingent on volunteers, and that's another opportunity for people to volunteer. The more volunteers we have that are able to open that space uh, on different days, my dream would be that we could be at least open six days a week uh, and, and encourage people to come down. I'm, I'll be in the middle of uh, when we can get things back online, putting a new exhibit together. And the idea of, of this exhibit is uh, not necessarily here's all of our trials and here's all of our gavels and, and all that, which is cool for Masons. But what I'd like to do is to put together an exhibit that really um, shares not just with the fraternity and our Masonic orders, but also with the community who, who Masons are. What is a Mason? Um, what is this stuff? You know, when you see a square and compass, what's that about? Um, telling the story of Masonry. And so I'm, I'll be working on um, getting some new exhibit cases in and, and doing a little bit of work around that. Now, uh, we have probably in the neighborhood of uh, uh, about, I want to say about f roughly about 50,000 books uh, and documents, about 6,000 objects, and uh, in terms of images, uh, roughly a half million of physical and digital images. Uh, it's it's not a collection that has been kept to museum standards over time, and that's another area where I desperately need volunteers to be able to start committing some energy to doing that because uh, there's, there's really a lot of interesting things. I brought in uh, three of our Masonic youth groups uh, locally here to do a little bit of work uh, uh, over uh, Veterans Day. And we took out everything in one of the collections rooms. And way in this back corner was this, you know, brown paper bag wrapped thing. And, and it, it, it said, you know, apron worn at George Washington's funeral. Okay, well, that, that piques my interest. Uh, we have one of those already, strangely. Um, but uh, it's like, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll play this game. I'll unwrap it. And so we opened it up. And uh, there's a, a woman who used to be the curator of the Northern Jurisdiction uh, Scottish Rite Museum in Lexington. Her name is Amy Newell. And uh, she uh, wrote a book uh, all about Masonic aprons. It's actually a fantastic book. It's kind of a coffee table book. Um, we, inside of this wrapper was this apron, and it's almost a dead ringer for one that's in this book that dates to 1897, or excuse me, 1797. Wow. Contemporary with George Washington. I mean, literally at that time. And you can see the lambskin. Um, interesting because this square versus rounded, you know, corner apron debate that, that goes on. Um, I, I can tell you that we don't have an apron in our collection uh, uh, from uh the 19th century and earlier that has a square apron, square corners, uh, all of them are rounded corners, but I'm not, that's not a fight that I'm into. <laughs> uh, I know for some people in our jurisdiction, it's a big deal, but this, uh, and I wish that I had a, a picture of it to share here. It is in our, uh, it's in our collection, but it's just a, a fantastic lambskin hand, hand painted uh, apron that, that appears to date back to uh, the 1790s. Uh, and so, so, you know, we have some things like that in the collection there, too. So you said, um, you mentioned about um, volunteers, and um, you also had mentioned that you guys are pretty much working remotely. And when some people think about volunteering, they think it's going to take a lot of their time. Like, mm -hmm. what kind of commitment do you look for out of volunteers um, with, with uh, your organization? So just like with donations, I, I, as a nonprofit person, I am thrilled by whatever somebody can do. If somebody can give a half an hour a week and they can just make a half hour's worth of phone calls, perfect. Um, if they are retired and that's what they want to do in their retirement is spend 40 hours a week making phone calls or volunteering in the library, those kinds of things perfect. Uh, we can make that work. Uh, we're, we're looking at, at any, any number of those kinds of things and, um, you know, recognizing that the, the fraternity, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a volunteer activity. I mean, personally, I feel very lucky. I'm one of very, very few people uh, who, you know, my, my living uh, is uh, supported by the fraternity. So, uh, you know, I, I, I get to work and do this, but I recognize that um, really most if not, you know, 99.9% .9 of the Masons out there, they do what they do because they love to do it. So I find a way to make that work for them to, to basically hit what's their passion and, and make that fit in a way that uh, gets them the satisfaction that they're looking for. 
I know it sounds like it's not really an answer, but uh, it's uh, it's the truth. We tailor it. No, no, that's per that's perfect because you know, I mean, I like to give time and I like to uh, donate to worthy things uh, uh, when I have time, and you know, sometimes it's a sporadic thing. Sometimes it's um, you know something as small as a half an hour a month of making phone calls. Um, yeah. So yeah. I mean, those are good. And like in our library museum, I mean, if I, that one's a little bit more structured. If I could get people, you know, on a once a week or once every couple of weeks to commit to a four hour chunk, that, that basically is a person that I can open that space for another four hours. And right now, the time that it's open is really, um, it's, it's not the time that the, the most normal people would actually want to go visit a, a library and a museum. It's at the time that's convenient for the volunteers. And, and that makes sense. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to build that pool of volunteers up to find some of those volunteers who want to do something on a Saturday or want to do something, uh, you know, in the afternoon or, or, or whatnot. And with the average age in our fraternity of 68, I... I can't imagine that we can't find some local retired folks that uh, might be interested in hanging out with some cool books and neat stuff for a few hours a week. I know there are some lodges that had some pretty cool collections and you had been working with them to try to put together some kind of a, a remote connection, if you will, or at least a remote cataloging of that. I know uh, we've had in the past Zane McCune, very wishful Zane McCune, and he's past master of Verity Lodge in Kent. And I know Verity was kind of a, one of the pilot programs for that. Is, is that something that's been continued or has kind of fallen off with interest? Or I don't get, there's, there's, some, so, there's so many cool libraries out there that aren't being used. Yeah, and that's really one of the challenges right now. And, 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 it, and it kills me because my, the start of my career in nonprofits, like back in the, the mid 80s, was in museums and and so the first half of my career was museums and libraries and that's the place where I actually spend the least amount of my time and and in part because I look at what we're doing and going like oh my god there is so much that needs to get done I I, I could have you know two full time staff and twenty volunteers and still not be getting done what we need to get done to do it do it the right way um, but uh, as far as the the uh, the piece that you're talking about, which is in effect kind of creating satellite libraries so that people, we, we basically use a, a library world, uh, which is a resource and tool that's available really to anybody that has a library, uh, rather than every lodge having to get their own subscription to it. What we do is, is basically we have a subscription to it, and then if a lodge wants to uh, catalog its books, they don't become Mars. They're still the Lodge's books. But what we can do is we can basically get it set up with a, a number and a barcode. And then if somebody is looking through the library world or through our library database and they're looking for a particular book and say they don't have it, we don't have it in our collection, or maybe it's somebody who's in Spokane and the last thing they want to do is drive all the way over here to get a book, but it turns out that it's um, in, you know, in Deer Park, it's not far away, um, you know, that's, that's an opportunity for information to be shared in a way where somebody could then reach out to Deer Park, and I'm just using them as an example, something closer to Spokane, uh, or in this case, you know, it, it could be that, uh, uh, you know, someone at King Solomon looks over and goes, hey, Zane, over at Verity there, you've got, uh, you know, this, this fantastic book by this guy, Kyle Grafstrom, who, uh, you know, Freemasonry in the West. And, uh, you know, I wonder where I could get a copy of that. Uh, and, uh, um, oh, well, we have it in our collection here. You can come take a look. So it, it's a way that we can, again, what I look at is, is that part of what Washington Masonic Charities does in the background, and, and we do this, I had mentioned fiscal sponsorships in, in the, the um, last episode. Uh, part of what we do is we look at our role as providing a little bit of back infrastructure support around some of those things that are charitable that lodges do, but lodges may not necessarily have the, um, the depth or the bandwidth to be able to do them as effectively. We can provide that kind of backing support in the background so that a lodge can do that. And, and, and again, that like our fiscal sponsorships, I mean, that's been a big thing. Uh, lodges don't have to worry about the charitable stuff. We take care of all that and the audits and the accounting piece. They go do the fun stuff and uh, don't have to worry about uh, uh, the books. So there's a number of different ways. Library is one of those ways. So uh, it looks like we're, we're running to the end of our, our second episode here. Um, 
but I want to make sure that we get uh, given the times when I'm sure that when the when this podcast airs, it won't have changed too much. Uh, that that uh, anyone who needs to reach out to Washington Masonic Charities, either because they have a library that they want you to uh, <laughs> help out with, or because they are looking to help someone else, or because they need help themselves, uh, what's the best way to to get in touch with with you guys over at Masonic Charities? So, if, uh, one, uh, if you want to give us a call, I'll tell you that to go on the web and uh, uh, each one of us have our um, extension numbers on there. We do have a toll-free number. It's 844-288-3531. It's 844-288-3531. And uh, we do use a phone tree navigating system in there, so be patient with it. Uh, but uh, you press the buttons and you'll get to, to the right person. All that contact information is on our website at www.wa-masoniccharities.org. And uh, that's under the contacts, as well as all the information about the rest of uh, our various programs. Just to be clear, that was charities with an S, right? Yes. It looks okay. kind of funny when you spell it out. wa-masoniccharities.org. And folks can follow us on our Facebook page, too. And uh, I, oh, I'm going to need to go look at that here. Sorry. Uh, that is uh, uh, facebook.com slash WA Masonic Charities dot, or excuse me, WA Masonic Charities. There's no hyphen in that. And we do try to keep that updated uh, for more current information as well. We'll definitely include links in the, in the show description for the website and for contacting Washington Masonic Charities. Yeah, we'll, we'll have our tech guy get on that. <laughs> Sure do appreciate you making the time to uh, come spend with us tonight. I think your message is great and your cause is, is awesome and uh, all your uh, things you're involved with. Uh, I'm quite impressed with what I've heard. I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you were able to come on and share that not only with us tonight, but in podcast land for years to come. They'll, uh, I'm sure we'll get many, many views over the years on this one. Happy to do it in any time, and and uh, and if you want to like talk on the the kind of the more Masonic side of charity, I've got a whole thing wrapped around that. So, um, not not what we do, but kind of some conceptual and symbolic ideas as well. So you know, I'm I'm happy to play anytime. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming out, and on behalf of uh, David Colbert and Steve Chung and myself. Uh, well, I just said thank you, but I'll say it again. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Brother Ken Gibson, Executive Director of Washington Masonic Charities. Thank you very much for coming out today. Thank you. Thanks for having and me. We'll see you on our next episode of the Working Tools Masonic Podcast. Bye.